In this video, we are going to find a power series representation for the function f of x equals arctan of x. It will be centered at the origin. Now, there are different ways that we could do this, but here's how I would like to do it in this exercise. The derivative of arctan of x is a nice expression. It's 1 over 1 plus x squared. So what we can do is take the function that we are trying to find a power series representation for and write arctan of x is an antiderivative of the expression 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. This is a nice integrand. 1 over 1 plus x squared looks like that prototype function 1 over 1 minus x, whose power series representation we already know. That's the, the power series that looks like x to the n. So what we can do is take this expression 1 over 1 plus x squared and rearrange terms, rewrite it as necessary so that we can bring in that geometric looking power series. So we've done these exercises before. Let me just go ahead and take 1 plus x squared in the denominator and write that as 1 minus negative x squared so that arctan of x will be an antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus negative x squared dx. This expression here, this negative x squared term, that is what will become the base of our geometric looking expansion. So I'm going to take this expression now and bring in a power series. We haven't anti-differentiated anything yet, so the integral's still in front. Now this expression, one over one minus negative x squared, we can replace with the sum, adding from n equals zero to infinity, negative x squared to the n, then we still have to anti-differentiate. Let me now just um, like make this look a little bit nicer. I'm just gonna rewrite this one more time essentially so that this is the antiderivative of the sum from n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n x to the two n dx. What I'm going to do now is anti-differentiate this expression with respect to x. So, this is a theorem that for a power series, the integral of the sum is the sum of the individual integrals. So basically, we're going to anti-differentiate term by term. You could start writing this out and, and see what that looks like if you went through term by term and anti-differentiated. But I think I can do it if I just look at this one expression right here and come up with a gen general looking antiderivative. So let's take this. I'm going to continue over here and write this as, let's see, I'm going to integrate now. So we'll get rid of the, the integral symbol. And what we're going to have is the sum of terms starting from n equals zero and going off to infinity. Negative one to the n is a coefficient that stays in front. Now, when I anti-differentiate x to the two n, using the power rule, that's going to become x to the two n plus one divided by two n plus one, like that. And that is our power series representation for arctan of x, it's centered at the origin. Let's make a couple remarks about it. Notice that all of the powers on x are odd. So if I start plugging in values for n, and here I'm just gonna look at this numerator, x to the two n plus one. When n equals zero, that's x. When n equals one, it's x to the third power, it's x cubed. Then when n equals two, it's x to the fifth. So all of the terms here uh, look like little monomials where the power on x is odd. So this is an odd symmetric expression, which matches actually the uh, property of arctan of x. So arctan of x is also odd symmetric. We're not quite done yet, because in addition to presenting the power series representation for arctan of x, I would also like to give the radius of convergence. And we'll actually take it a little bit further. We'll find the interval of convergence. So for the radius of convergence, I integrated a known power series in order to get this power series. So that means that we are going to inherit the radius of convergence for this. So when you anti-differentiate or differentiate a power series to get to a new one, you keep the same radius of convergence. So what is the radius of convergence for this? Well, it's going to give us all x values satisfying that negative x squared, the base here for this geometric series looking power series. Uh, we want all of the x values so that negative x squared has an absolute value less than one. Okay, so let's write that down. We want the radius 
to return us all of the x values so that negative x squared, the absolute value of that is less than one. Well, that's like saying x squared is less than one. So our radius around the center point x equals zero is one. Therefore, arctan of x has this power series representation between negative one and one, but actually here we also would like to check the endpoints. So this series may actually converge at plus or minus one. So let's see what happens when we plug in the left endpoint. How about x equals negative one? When we do that, we are going to get the series from n equals zero to infinity, uh, negative one to the n. When x is negative one, this numerator turns into negative one raised to odd powers. Every single value of n is going to give us a numerator that's negative one to an odd power. So this is always going to be negative one in the numerator divided by two n plus one. This is an alternating series. If you want to, what you could do is, let me make a little adjustment here. This negative one to the n times negative one could be written as negative one to the n plus one, like that. So this is an alternating series. The terms one over two n plus one go to zero as n goes to infinity, they decrease. So this passes the alternating series test. So we do get convergence at the left endpoint, x equals negative one. Take a minute now and try the right endpoint. So what happens if you take x equals one and plug it into this power series? Do you get convergence? Okay, hopefully what you concluded is that you also get convergence when x equals one by the alternating series test. So when x equals one, that numerator just becomes one. So we're looking at the series whose terms add up from n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n, just plain old one over two n plus one, that's the, just the negative one times this series. So this also converges by the AST, the alternating series test. So the conclusion is that arctan of x has this power series representation on the domain from negative one to one. What I would like to do now is take a moment to visualize the convergence of this power series to the function f of x equals arctan of x. So here's a picture of that function, y equals arctan of x, on the domain from negative 1.5 through 1.5. Notice that arctangent is an odd symmetric function, so you can see the, the symmetry about the origin there. What we are looking for is convergence between x equals negative one and one. But before we discuss that, let me just point out a couple other properties of the arctan function. So y equals arctan of x has horizontal asymptotes at y equals pi over two and y equals negative pi over two. So the limit as x goes to infinity of arctan of x is pi over two and the limit as x goes to negative infinity of arctan of x is negative pi over two. We're just looking for convergence though between negative one and one. And what we will see in this demonstration is both the convergence on that domain, as well as the lack of convergence outside of that domain. So the goal now is to start plotting the first few partial sums of this power series representation for arctan of x. The first partial sum isn't going to look that much like the function, but then as we add more and more terms, what you'll see is that overall, we start to look more and more like y equals arctan of x between x equals negative one and one. So let's plot the first uh, term in our power series expansion. That happens when n equals zero. When n equals zero, what we are looking at is just the straight line y equals x. So that's the very first term in this power series expansion. Notice that is actually the line which is tangent to the graph of y equals arctan of x at the origin. So that's um, our first partial sum. Now let's add the next term and the expansion to this. So we'll have the n equals zero and the n equals one term. And that's going to give us a cubic polynomial x minus x cubed over three. So you can see it looks a little better than the first partial sum. Now let's add to this the next partial sum. So this new curve is the graph of x 
minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the fifth over 5. So you can see the convergence gets a little better and better. Let me now just let this demonstration run through the next few partial sums so that you can see that the convergence is happening between x equals negative 1 and 1. And as you watch this, also notice that we lose the convergence to the left of negative 1 and to the right of x equals 1. One neat application of this power series representation for f of x equals arctan of x is it gives us a way to approximate the value of pi. So in particular, we know that arctan of x has this power series representation on the domain from negative 1 to 1, including the right endpoint 1. Notice that 1 is a nice number to plug into x for this power series because 1 to the 2n plus 1 is always 1. So it actually turns into a series that's not too hard to write down. Let's plug x equals 1 into both sides of this equality. So let x equal 1. On the left-hand side, we'll have arctan of 1. And on the right-hand side, we will have an infinite series of numbers where the terms are going to add up from n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1, 1 to the 2n plus 1. Okay, so now let's rewrite this. Arctan of 1 is pi over 4. If you didn't know that, recall that arctan is the inverse of the tangent function between neg uh, uh, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 for tangent, so that vertical branch or that branch between the vertical asymptotes around the y axis. So tangent of pi over 4 is 1. That means arctan of 1 is pi over 4. So that's where that knowledge came from. OK, so on the left, we have pi over 4. And on the right, I'm just going to rewrite this, but I'm going to omit writing this very fancy version of the number 1. So pi over 4 is the sum of a series of numbers where the terms look like negative 1 to the n over 2n plus 1. If we start to expand this, that's going to be 1 minus a third plus a fifth, minus a seventh, plus a ninth, etc. So I can solve for pi now if I multiply both sides of this equality by 4. So in other words, pi is 4 times this convergent series of numbers. So we know that pi has uh, an expansion that looks like pi equals 4 minus 4 thirds plus 4 fifths minus 4 sevenths, et cetera. I've written this out, but you could also just say pi is 4 times this convergent series of numbers. This is a neat equality because pi is what's called an irrational number. It cannot be written as a ratio of integers, like 4 over 11 or something like that. But all of these are rational numbers because we're presenting them as ratios of integers. So we're saying this irrational number has this form where it looks like the sum of kind of nice fractions. So this is a, a true value for pi if you took the entire series. We could say, hey, this series of numbers adds up, and we know that that value is pi. But if you wanted to approximate pi, what you could do is look at what happens if you start taking partial sums for this series. The first one's not very good. You know, if I just took the first term, I'd be saying pi is about 4. But what about 4 minus 4 thirds, 4 minus 4 thirds plus 4 fifths, et cetera? So I'll leave it to you to do this as a little exercise. But what you can do is start looking at the partial sums for this convergent series of numbers. And what you'll find is as you keep taking more and more sums, what you add up to you should get closer and closer to the value of pi.